What's going on, YouTube? Big Jer, back with you guys again. And today, we're going to be talking about an interesting mixing technique, cleaning up your mix by uh, mixing narrow to wide. Let me show you what I mean. So before we jump into this, I want to say that, you know, back many years ago, um, before this like modern type style of like dance music and club music kind of really just took over, you know, you would go see a band play. And if the drummer was playing, you know, you would see the hi-hat maybe off to the left a little bit. And, you know, if you heard the hi-hat off to the left, it wouldn't, it would be okay because you would have seen it and it makes sense, right? So nowadays, if we pan our hi-hat off to the left, does that mean the person on the left side of the club is going to hear more of the hi-hat than the person on the right side? Well, we don't want that. So, but we still need to separate things, you know, doing some what I call static panning uh, by leaving the hi-hat maybe just to the left, you know, that would clean up the mix. But again, now we're creating too, I think, too much of a spread sonic image. Let's jump into this example that I made. Um, and let me show you how I might mix narrow to wide to create the space I need, but also not leave out anybody in the, in the club or the listener experience. Okay, so I made a little drum rack that um, I will make available for a download, as well as I made two racks that we're going to use to both narrow and center our, our sounds and one to more spread it out. Okay, um, cool. So I, again, I have made a custom drum rack for you guys, and uh, I will include that um, as well. So cool. So let's take a listen to this little pattern I have. Now, you're going to notice there's a lot of things going on as far as percussions and stuff like that. You could hear everything, but things kind of get a little bit jumbled. Um, let me show you what I mean. Cool. So definitely clean. Everything's already been kind of leveled. In fact, I'll tab on over and you can see that I've kind of already kind of leveled things out. I've used the glue compressor to kind of focus in the RMS. Um, if you guys don't know what I mean by that, you could check out my other video um, on uh, RMS uh, and the glue compressor. Cool. So I've got everything right here and everything is definitely leveled out and sounding good. But, you know, for example, did you even tell that there was both a clap and a snare? Probably not, right? Probably just sounded like one sound because they're both kind of sitting right on top of each other right now. Same thing with the hi-hats, okay? The hi-hats are kind of, kind of all jumbled into one, right? So let me show you how I would kind of separate these things a bit. So let's go ahead and start with our snare, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and solo that. There it is right there. And I'm gonna go ahead over to my uh, to my rack. So I'm gonna grab my sum and difference rack. I'm gonna pull that guy right in before my glue compressor. And what this is gonna do is, I've actually got, I could open this up and kind of talk about it really fast. What I've made is, I've made a couple of things here. I've got a an EQ with mid side, but the sides are ripped out of this one and vice versa on this one here. So basically this is only mids and this is only sides. And I've gone ahead and mapped the um, volume over here. So basically, it's kind of like a, um, you know, you could adjust the mid side uh, volume with right right here. Um, a couple other things you could do if that's not something that you're interested in, if you wanted to actually fold the whole sound to mono, well, I have a utility right here that takes you from 100%, uh, and as you pick this up, it'll take you down to mono. And then I've got this will turn on the bass mono, and then this tells you where the bass um, where it starts to become mono. So this is a really um, cool rack and it really allows you to center your sound how you want. To make this a little bit easier, let's just kind of fold it a bit into the center. Okay, and maybe we even lower some of the sides here. Okay, so this is gonna be more of a mono sound now, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my clap, right? And that's also right there in the center. But what I'm gonna do is on my clap, I'm gonna grab my other, my space shape rack, my space shaper rack. And this is basically kind of like a cool Haas effect rack, but I have a little more control. So I have the Haas effect and I can control my time, okay? All the way up to 35 milliseconds, but I got a couple other cool things happening. So what this is gonna do is it's going to make it mono before it even comes in here. And in this case, it won't make a difference, but this rack works on any sound. So no matter what version of stereo this sound might be, this will force it into mono. 
and then this will make it your version of stereo. And then what you could do is use this um, balance knob here, the uh, width knob here, to actually like, so we're gonna take a sound, we're gonna make it mono, and then we're gonna make it as wide as we possibly can with the, with the Haas effect, and then we could bring it in if we want with this extra little control we have here, um, right here. Cool, so let's check this out. I'm gonna pull it back in, great. And let's go ahead and, there we go. So without it, right there in the middle with it, Okay, we have it on the side. So I'm gonna bring it up a little bit. There we go. And now when I play these two together. Okay, and now I could just, it's just a volume thing now. I could just turn this guy up. There we go. So now we could hear how the claps are happening on the side and the snare is happening in the middle. And we could hear all three at the exact same time. Wicked cool. So let's try the same thing with a hi-hat loop. We got our hi-hat loop right here. Wicked. So let's just get this out of the way of everything, right? So here's our space shaper again. Let's bring it in a little bit. Perfect. So now you can hear it's kind of like in this section here, okay? Dope, so now that's out of the way. We got a little bit of a dip in the middle where we can create something else, right? So let's go over to our other hi-hats. And these guys, we're gonna just make these more mono, right? So some indifference here again, and we're gonna go ahead and just maybe, how about this one? We just turn all the sides down. That'll do it, right? Perfect, now we're just getting what's in the mono signal. And let's force that up here a little bit. And now if we listen to these two together, You can hear all three again across the line. Now, let's go ahead and listen to this mix a little bit. And we've gone ahead and separated our snare and our clap and our hi-hats. And you're gonna see how already everything becomes just a little more clear. Wicked. Now, this same technique can be used when you're mixing two sounds together, not just percussion. So, you know, imagine if you had like a lead sound, right? And then you had some super saws behind it. So you had a nice lead happening and a super saw behind it. And, and you're having a hard time getting either one of them to stand out because they're blurring a bit, right? So why not take the racks that we have developed here and like your sum and difference rack, right? Well, that could narrow out or focus into the center your um, your lead. And maybe you could use the space designing, uh, space shaping rack to kind of spread out your super saws a little bit, making a little bit of a divot and making all, all of these sounds being heard at the same time. I hope this helped guys. If it did, please, like and subscribe. I'm gonna do you guys a solid by leaving a download link for all of these racks and everything so you could experiment with this and in your own tracks too. All right guys, hope it helped. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.